that discipline. What kind of advice would you give them, practical advice? Yeah, I think that you have to live, there's a lot of practical advice I can give. Yeah. In terms of the religious sense, I would say you need to live like God is always watching. You may wow. have the opportunity to do something bad or you may have the opportunity to steal some money or snake somebody, but in the end, you're going to pay for that and the bill will be paid. Mm -hmm. I think if you do the right thing, in my experience, if you're a person who does the right thing, firm handshake, is on time, doesn't lie to anybody, does what he's supposed to do, is honest with a good heart, is genuinely polite to everyone he meets. If you are that person, you get very far in life. I have ne I've yet to meet people who just do all the simple things right, who completely fail at life. But I've met a lot of people who snake or steal some money and they get really rich, then they lose it all, or they get rich and end up a gambling addict or depressed or et cetera. If you want a good society, so then you have to argue and sit and say, do these people want a happy functioning society or do they want something else? I, live, I have to live the exact same life regardless of how I feel. So. Me, for me, happiness is not a good indicator on how life should be lived. You shouldn't wake up and say, how happy am I today? How does that affect how I act? That's not how I operate. I wake up and say, what must be done? What will allow me to be proud of myself? What will allow me to achieve? And those things will be done regardless of how I feel. And those are how, that's how the most successful people on earth all operate. The most successful people on earth don't only do things because they feel happy about doing them. The whole world doesn't give a fuck if men are happy or not. Nobody cares about men being happy. We talk about women being happy. We want children to be happy. If you look at a full-grown man on Christmas morning, he's smiling because his wife is smiling. He's smiling because his children are smiling. Nobody even buys him anything. What do they buy the dad? Socks? Nobody cares Damn. about men being happy. So why do you as a man care about you being happy? That's how you're going to fall into these traps. I'm a, very, I'm a very content person. I live a fantastic life. I'm not miserable or depressed. I'm not sad ever. But I don't wake up and go, I want to be happy today. No, sir. I wake up and say, okay, things must be done. And those things will be completed regardless of how I feel. Regardless of how I feel. You can lock me in a dungeon for an unknown amount of time in, a Roma in Romania, and I will still complete as many push-ups as I can possibly do in the dark by myself. What else am I going to do? Sit there and be sad? Happy or sad? The push-ups must be done. It's called duty, it's called honor, it's called pride. If you had these things, you would never do dumb shit in the first place. So you have to just understand that God is always watching. He's going to reward you in the end. That's the first thing. And the second thing I will say is that you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with and you need to create your reality. I think the biggest problem with young people today is that they don't create their realities heavily enough. The people that they want to spend most time with aren't adding any value to their lives and then they end up wondering why they don't get it. I stand in the mirror with a pure heart. I know I am the best version of me that could possibly ever exist. I know that God is proud of me. There's nothing that God hates more than sloth and laziness. If God were to create a man and that man were to sit around and do fuck all, God will frown upon you. It's why you're never lucky. If you're listening to this and you think I'm never lucky, I'll tell you why, because God dislikes you because you're fucking lazy. Start to work, start to show God the beauty of his own creations. You'd be amazed how lucky you become. God is unhappy with these people. And inside their hearts, they're unhappy. We talk about depression, anxiety, all those things you mentioned to me earlier on this podcast. That comes from self-loathing. You loathe your own weakness. You loathe your own laziness. This is what all of these things are. It's so easy to win if you can control your own mind. But it seems that nobody fucking can. If you cannot control your own mind, then you are just a feather in the wind of life. Because your own mind is the only thing you can control. You can't control the weather. Right. You can't control other people. You can't even control whether your heart stops beating. You might have a heart attack tomorrow. You can't control anything besides what you think. If you cannot control your own mind, then you go through life with zero control, zero influence. You can't control anything. You're just a feather in the wind waiting for life to blow you from happy place to sad place to happy place to sad place completely hoping on the gods to be fortunate to you because if any genuine discomfort comes your way you're fucked it is trained like everything else in life it is trained so if you find yourself not appreciating what you have until it's gone then you must blink and cure your brain if you find yourself unable to focus or concentrate on tasks you must blink and cure your brain if you find yourself unable to go and dedicate yourself to something you don't want to do you must blink and cure your brain. In the world we live in today, it's hyper competitive. And if you want to be the kind of man that has the choice of women to choose a good one, you need to be an excellent man. It's no longer acceptable for you to just be an average Joe or below average. You have to get up and you have to work hard. You have to be smart and interesting. And you have to be charismatic and make some money and be in good shape. And you have to try very hard. Genuine masculinity is not out here to hurt people.
is absolutely the opposite. It's out here to protect. And when bad things happen, they call traditionally masculine men. You need a firefighter. You need a masculine man. And you call the police because of the problem you have. You want masculine men. And as soon as a woman or a man is in trouble, when you look for backup, you look for masculine men. And masculine men have a duty to provide and protect those they care about. We have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them. And that's why we stayed in the Titanic and died. Those were masculine when men. Life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You're only going to be cared about based on how useful you are. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a superhero if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. But if you're going to stand around and wait for a handout, nobody's going to ever respect you. I think that a lot of people have forgotten about how difficult and how competitive it is as a man. We're always in constant competition with each other. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I want to be as important and strong and good-hearted and God-fearing as possible, and I need to work hard to achieve those things. Look at it. That's how life should be. You should have a duty to your ancestors. I was instilled with a duty for a very long time to honor my ancestors through achievement. And I was told from a very young age that the only thing your ancestors are interested in is achievement. Even to this day, when I do podcasts, people repeatedly talk about my father. If I wasn't successful, he wouldn't be spoken about. He, lost, he died nine years ago, hmm. and he was a good chess player, but no one's really that interested in chess. The reason he lives on is because I'm so monumentally successful that people are interested in my origin story, and he is mentioned. The reason I will live forever is because my son will be so monumentally successful that they'll talk about how he could have been such a perfect specimen of man, how he was raised, and they will mention me. If you give a shit about your ancestry, and if you give a fuck about your family, you're not a selfish person, and you want them to exist out in the ether for reality, for, for the eternity of reality, it is your duty to be successful. Yeah. A traditionally masculine man does things he doesn't feel like doing because it is his duty to do them. He charges into the burning building because it is his duty. Not because he feels like it, because it is his duty. Men who do not control their emotions are dangerous. If you find a man who is stoic, he's not going to hurt people. He's going to sit and think about his actions very carefully and he's going to be a good man who protects for and provides for his family. If you find a man who just acts out on impulse and does whatever he feels like, you're going to find a dangerous man. You need to be teaching stoicism. You need to be teaching young men to understand that the world is very, very difficult. It's hard to be a man. You're going to feel bad sometimes. You just suck it up and perform anyway. Not just sit there, you cry your eyes out. This is what God wants from us, from all of us. It doesn't matter what the adversary is. It doesn't matter how much you're hurt by it. You need to allow it to motivate you to push harder and, and show your power um, and show your resilience. And I have very much understood that when bad things happen to me, this is a lesson from the universe or from God or from the creator to, to, to stand up and show who I am and who I can be and to take all of the pain and anguish and disappointment and heartbreak and all of this and turn it into a force I can use for good and to make myself a better person. And I think if you don't approach life this way, that you're always going to struggle. Because life is hard for everybody. It's going to be hard. It doesn't matter who you are or what you do. You need to be resilient to it. But if you're just any man who's out there in the world today, you need to look at some problems that need solving, either for yourself or for society, and find a way to fix them. And I think mm -hmm. that you should just adopt some problems and try and fix them. It doesn't matter what it is. You can just try and fix the litter in your area, or you can try and get a six-pack, or yeah. whatever you want. So if you love your family mm. and you love your last name and you're proud of yourself, mm. then you have a duty to be massively monumentally successful to show homage to your ancestors. Mm -hmm. I find it amazing there are people out here today who are gonna sit and say, oh, I'm sad, I'm too depressed, I don't wanna work hard. There, do you understand that only 200 years ago there were peasants out working a field, starving, mm -hmm. surviving the Black Death, surviving the plague, struggling to exist just to reproduce so that 200 years later you can be the end of their bloodline for you to mm -hmm. sit on your ass and do mm -hmm. fucking nothing? Like, well, you're a fuck up. You're fucking up your entire bloodline of your entire ancestry. You owe these people things. You must, they went through hell for you to exist. You have a debt, you have a duty to pay. You have to be the best possible version of yourself. And the same to God. God loves people who try. God loves people who work hard. Mm. It's amazing if you try your very best all the time, what God will give you. Mm. He'll give it to you, anything you want. Mm. If you actually try. Not, not convincing yourself you try, actually try. Mm. They're different things. Disappearing from society. It used to be like, I am Andrew, son of Emery. It was all about who yes. you're son of. Mm, yes. Right? Exactly. And it's all vanishing mm, now. Yeah. But you, you have a legacy you can build. And mm. and I I love the fact that when I was growing up, when my dad walked into a chess tournament, people were scared because his name was said. And they were mm. fearful of his last name. And now people are fearful of the last name again because of me. And they will be again because of my son. And this is, this is the beauty of life as a man. And uh, one of the most terrifying but also gratifying things of, of, of life as a man is that we're all born relatively valueless. I don't think women are born that way. A woman, if she's born, especially if she's attractive, has an innate value. People just want her no matter what. 
But as a man, if you're not an important man, nobody gives a fuck about you and they're mm. never gonna care. So you have to build yourself from the ground up and that's scary for a lot of people, but it's also a massive opportunity. You mm. can decide if you wanna be a famous musician or a nice sensitive poet or a painter mm. or a kickboxing world champion or a businessman. You get to decide on all the different characters in the video game. You can choose who do I wanna be? And then if you actually try, actually try, you can become it. Isn't that amazing? You can wake up and go, you know what? I wanna be this kind of guy. Mm. I knew who I wanted to be. I want to be the dude pulling up in the Lambo, three in the morning, gets out. Everyone's like, who is this big, strong, rich dude? I want to be that man, so I became it. Mm. And, and if you don't want that, if you want to go be a, a, a musician and play guitar and get a bunch of chicks mm. and chill in Bali and smoke weed, whatever, go, you can choose your yeah. character and build it. And there's also some universal constants. Like if you, a lot of people don't have the ability to understand the compounding effect of doing the right thing time after time. Even if you start a new business and you don't know what to do. I guarantee if you're always on time, if you're a builder and you're always on time, take the basic shit, just be on time. Yeah. Over time, you may, you may think, oh, I was just on time, no one notices. Trust me, across 10 years, that's the difference between being a successful builder yeah. and not being a successful builder. Yeah. Just stick to the absolute basics and, and do the right thing and do mm -hmm. know what you're supposed to do. And this is why I have so little sympathy for people who go, oh, I'm trying to make it and I can't because I think they're lying to me and they're lying to themselves. So I got a lot of emails, a lot of messages, a lot of people like, bro, I'm trying my best. And my answer is simply, no, you're not. Mm. I, I really don't think they're trying their best. I, maybe I come across and I seem non-sympathetic, but I'm from a council estate in Luton, I'm now a billionaire. And it's because I actually tried my best. A, a lazy person thinks he's working too hard and a successful person thinks he isn't working hard enough. Mm. And we're doing 20 times the work they are. And we're like, oh, I could have done more, could have done this. Oh, I missed that today, can't miss that again. Oh, I should have taken that call, I should have flown there. I should have, That's you know, we have guilt about it. They don't give a solitary fuck. And even if you pointed it out to them, they'd sit there and go, oh yeah, and they'd make some excuse for it. It's, it's the brutal arrogance of people. It's like, if you're not gonna take any action at all after two hours of being educated, then you're gonna just stay a loser. Yeah, 100%. That's the reality.